Carson King, known as Call Me Carson on the internet, is a well-known YouTube figure that created his channel back in 2012. Most of you know who he is, but to give a quick backstory, he was 13 at the time he started his YouTube channel, but it wouldn't pick up steam until 6 years ago in 2018. Jesus, 2018 was 6 years ago. Where he would switch the focus from gaming to funny moments type of content. Hmm, gaming? Wait a minute. I don't like it. Funny moments. I'm sorry, gaming. So what made him successful and how did he grow such a large audience in that relatively short amount of time? Well, let's take a look. But before we do, please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one and leave a like. It helps me out a ton and it only takes a second. Thank you. Back to the video. In 2018, he started uploading content that was him and his friends reacting to various things like DeviantArt, yearbook quotes, or cursed images. I meant to say DeviantArt, I don't know why I said DeviantArt, but I'm not doing that take again. React content was beginning to pick up pace around that time, or rather, it was the popular thing to do. But instead of following the formula, he switched it up a bit by reacting to things with five of his friends. Well, actually four and him, but you know, watching them felt like you were there with them. You know, those 2am Discord conversations you have with the boys when everything is funny and you're just having a good time? Yeah, it was that as a video. The formula worked. Video after video, they were all bangers. And now they sit around or above 5 million views each. That was definitely a great indicator that his channel was going in the right direction. I call that the honeymoon phase of a channel. The views are great, everyone is enjoying the content and nothing can go wrong. Or can it? He kept uploading React content but he also did something that was similar like his Fiverr, Discord and TikTok videos. However, it would all change when he entered a game show called The Rashler also known as Lover Host. The game basically is a spin-off of The Bachelor where a group of men or women compete against each other for a single man or woman. In this case, Carson was the star of the show. Just the Minx, better known as Minx, the, and Katerino were in the finals and Carson had to make a decision on who to eliminate. He chose to eliminate Minx and Katerino ended up winning the show. Or rather, Carson, as she chose love. Twitter superstar has chosen is Wait. Katerino! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Congratulations! To explain that real quick, if a person chooses host and they get picked, they get hosted by Raj with all the viewers watching the show pouring into that person's stream. On the other hand, if they choose love, they end up going on a date and I put date in parentheses here, with that person. Basically, they make some content together whilst alluding to a potential relationship. So why does that matter? Well, that's because this would be the first major drama Carson would find himself in. You see, not long after the game show, Katerina and Carson would interact with each other, even making IRL content together, and they seemed like they were getting close to one another, to the point where the entire internet thought they were together. However, all of a sudden, Fitz and Carson would stop talking to each other and they unfollowed each other. Carson would also stop uploading and no one knew what was happening. Fans began to speculate on what had happened and Carson would confirm their suspicions on a now deleted Reddit post. Basically, Katerino hooked up with Fitz behind his back and that obviously hurt Carson. Even though they weren't officially together, she let him on and betrayed his trust. What's interesting is that Fitz was not the only one. She hooked up with five different individuals in a short span of time, and the icing on the cake was the fact that she had a boyfriend this whole time. The boyfriend was someone who wasn't an intern personality, so little is known about him. As you can imagine, as soon as the news hit, the internet went crazy. She was under a lot of attack because of what she did, in her apology, she didn't really seem all that sorry and blamed it all on her dissociating and feeling like a passenger in her body. The internet, of course, clowned on her even more. I'm sorry this took so long to come out. I was processing come out. I think the reason she became so hated is in the aftermath, really. When talking about the situation on the internet or with other streamers, she would purposefully avoid or leave out key details of the story to show her in a better light. Because of that, her channel took a nosedive and never really recovered. 
Her YouTube is inactive for two years now, and even though she streams on Twitch, she averages around 70 viewers. It's not a small amount, but definitely a far cry from what once was. Carson, on the other hand, felt bad that he had exposed her and apologized for doing something immature like that out of spite. And the general internet took it pretty well. I mean, when you look at the situation objectively, she was wrong for doing that, yes. Was it a rude thing to do? Yes. But was it illegal? No. Compared to the other dramas like what EDP, Dr. Disrespect or now Ava Tyson did, it pales in comparison. So to have her career ruined over it seems like a bit of an overkill. I'm sure Carson realized that and that that was the reason he felt so guilty. Nevertheless, this was just the beginning of what's yet to come. You probably know that Carson was a part of Lunch Club, a YouTuber group that consisted of Jay Schlatt, Carson, Slimesicle, Travis, Ted Nevison, C Scoop, and Hugbox. Things were looking up. He kept uploading his usual content until something unexpected happened. His friend, Travis and Hugbox, would appear on Drama Alert and voice their concerns about Carson. They would explain how Carson told them he used to text underage fans, but he was done with it and is trying to be a better person. But the problem with that is he started doing it again and this time they felt the need to take action and prevent it from happening again. This is something every member of Lunch Club knew and they would all start speaking up about it after the video dropped. Some even took federal action to look into the incident. Interestingly enough, when the full story came out, there was a distinct divide amongst fans. Some thought it was not that big of a deal, and others demanded legal action be taken against him. Here's the short retelling. Carson was texting a 17-year-old with messages sometimes being inappropriate, but he was 19 at the time. So some people thought calling him a p-word was going a bit too far. This would cause Lunch Club to fall apart and Carson would go off the grid. He left all social media and was not heard or seen for a year. But that would all change on August 26, 2021, where he would upload a video titled Moving Forward, where he says he will donate all of his channel earnings of that year to charity and explains how he does not want to make his side of the story video, but instead do something positive. The video was well received with 416,000 likes compared to 43,000 dislikes. Now the biggest question was, how would he move forward? The community he built was revolved around his four friends hanging out in Discord and their interactions. How can he make videos like he used to when those people do not wish to interact with him anymore? Well, let me introduce you to Gavin, Matt, Loki, Joey, and Nico. They would be the new reoccurring guests on his channel and the audience response to them was quite positive. I think most people just wanted to see Carson back after what they deemed a pointless drama and the views reflected that. Sure, he wasn't pulling 2 plus million views on each and every video, but he was keeping a positive 500,000-ish views. Considering how many big names cut ties with him, I'd say that that is pretty impressive and goes to show how Carson has a talent in content making that isn't entirely carried by his former friends. However, even after all this time, the drama still doesn't seem to be over. His former friends allude to there being more than meets the eye and that he did something much worse than what's made public, but for now it's just word of mouth. Carson can be found on his Call Me Carson live channel, where he uploads every few days, consisting of stream highlights, his main channel and his Twitch, where he streams, well, when he wants to. Hopefully I summarized it well and you found the video enjoyable. Tell me how you feel about his situation in the comments below. Do you think he deserves to be cancelled or not? That's all for this video, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!